Hi, I'm Michelle Vianvile, and I'd like to show you just some of the new map graphics in ArcGIS Pro 2.6. Creating ad hoc maps with custom graphics and text has never been so easy. To get started, let's zoom into the Galapagos Islands. The Galapagos Islands are the only place where penguins live north of the equator. So let's use the new map graphics to style and enhance this map. Using the Add Graphics Layer tool, I can insert custom graphics and text without having to build a new feature layer. Clicking here adds a new layer on my map and activates the appearance and graphics tabs, giving me access to the tools that I need. Now, let's highlight where penguins live on Isabella Island. I'll select my target layer and click the freehand line to sketch along the coastline. I can also style and change the symbol of my line. I would also like to add text to show that this is the Galapagos Islands. Now, what makes the Galapagos Islands ecosystem really unique are these converging ocean currents. I created this graphics layer to show the Humboldt current and other currents coming around the islands to bring cold water and fish for penguins to thrive. Lastly, this map wouldn't be complete without one more element, the famous Galapagos penguin. These are just a few examples of how the new map graphics in ArcGIS Pro 2.6 helps you quickly enhance and style your maps. Hi, my name is Jason Camerano. Let's check out the new least squares adjustment tool utilizing the DynaJust least squares engine for the parcel fabric. Here, we have a small subset of Harris County, Texas. On the left, we have a parcel to be subdivided, and on the right, we have a scan plat map that contains the necessary COGO information. Once this parcel has been subdivided, a data quality check needs to be performed, and that's never been easier than with the new tool, Analyze Parcels by Least Squares Adjustment. Let's set the parcel fabric, set the analysis type, and click Run to let this tool iterate and converge within the given tolerance. While this tool is running, I'd like to point out that running a consistency check allows you to analyze your data without the need for any control points. As the tool completes, a new analysis group layer is added to the map. Now, the original fabric remains unchanged, but we can see based on the adjustment vectors that range from a, from a fraction of an inch to just over two feet, how the least squares adjustment is defining the best fit for the point's positions. We can also see some bold red lines. These indicate inconsistent measurements. We can see that the distance value on the line entered is 532 feet, yet the plat says 526 feet. Correcting this mistake and rerunning the consistency check, we can see the range of movement in the adjustment vectors has been reduced to less than a foot. Now, let's check out some data from Sheboygan County, Wisconsin. Here, we've run a weighted least squares adjustment that takes into account control points to constrain that adjustment. Let's analyze one of the vectors in this data. Here we can see how that point is going to move based on the adjustment vector, and the error ellipse shows the statistical confidence region for that point's new position. These adjustment results can now be used to generate an accuracy heat map to get a clear, holistic view of the positional uncertainty of the fabric points. We can see areas of high spatial accuracy in blue, and now, we can easily determine where we need more control and measurement data in the orange areas that are less spatially accurate. The new least squares adjustment tool brings a whole new level of analysis and visualization to parcel fabric spatial accuracy. Hi, it's Michelle again. I'd like to share with you the latest integration in ArcGIS. It's the ability to seamlessly interact with engineering files stored in Autodesk BIM 360. BIM 360 allows GIS professionals and designers to better collaborate with shared projects and data. Now that I'm connected, I'll refresh to ensure I have access to the most recent Autodesk projects. These are design files that have been shared with me, which includes things like Civil 3D, Revit, and CAD files. Let's go ahead and download a CAD file for a new office building. Now that I have this new office building on my map, I can see details such as room numbers and assets. This same workflow can also be used to load your utility network 
with updated CAD designs. Let's take a look at our engineering data. This is a CAD design for a water utility network that's been managed in Civil 3D and uploaded to Autodesk BIM 360. What's really exciting about working with data in BIM 360 is that we can quickly check the status for any updates. There is a new version, so let's refresh to see the latest design file to connect the water system to the new building. I'll select Refresh to see the latest updates. Notice how the pipeline now extends to the new building. Traditionally, this used to require translation and GIS professionals manually updating the network data. Now that we refresh our engineering data, we can use this design to update our utility network, giving us the ability to run a trace. I'll select a starting point to run a connected trace back to the pipe network. And this completes our design workflow from BIM 360 to ArcGIS Pro and to the utility network trace. The Autodesk BIM 360 integration ensures that engineers, designers, and GIS professionals can communicate assets in a more seamless and timely fashion. Hi, my name is Deilson da Silva. I want to introduce you to the utility network and to the new non-spatial object capabilities. Here I have a telecommunication information model that includes fiber cables, thousands of network strands, and all the necessary equipment that we use to connect houses and businesses. The challenge that many telco providers face is efficiently managing the massive amount of equipment when they all share the same location. For example, racks, shelves, ports, all of that has to flow through a traceable utility network. Let me show you how to use the new non-spatial object capabilities to help you overcome this challenge. If I select one of these fiber cables on my table view, I will see the selection on my map. Why? Because this is a feature that has its own geometry. Each fiber cable contains multiple strands. On the right side, I have this table that shows all the strands stored as non-spatial objects. Because the geometry for each strand is inherited from the parent fiber, we don't see any shape field. Let me run a trace in order to show you how to connect the customer to the access point. If I use this customer location as the starting point of my upstream trace, I will see what is needed to add a new service to this location. The trace is identifying all the equipment necessary to provide the service to this customer. The right fiber with the right strands and the right switches to the right ports. I can also see the results of my trace on my map across the tables. And I can also see the trace results in my simple single line diagram. And if I go all the way down to the access point, I can also see the ports within the access hub diagram. The new non-spatial object capabilities allow organizations to model and perform complex analysis with a new level of details. Hi everyone, I am Ankita Bakshi, and today I'm going to show you two new geoprocessing tools, co-location analysis and spider diagrams, to help us understand if broken streetlights are related to traffic accidents at night. 
Here we see traffic accidents reported within a year for this neighborhood in Chicago. I want to analyze if the nighttime accidents are co-located with 311 calls for broken street lights. With these points on the map, we can see some spatial relationships between accidents and broken street lights. Here at this intersection, for example, we see an accident on July 24th and multiple reports of street lights not working in the area. Even though they're all together spatially, they are months apart in time and are likely not related. If we try to visually analyze at the scale of an entire city, it becomes next to impossible to accurately understand these relationships. The new tool in ArcGIS Pro called co-location analysis helps us find such relationships in space and time. I want to find where accidents are co-located with broken street lights within a distance of 100 meters and a time span of one week. The tool filtered out the random patterns in the data and highlighted the locations where accidents at night are statistically co-located with broken street lights, shown in red. Let's investigate one of these locations. Here we see the tool has co-located this accident with multiple lights that were out at the same time. After identifying these co-located locations, next, I might want to assign them to the nearest maintenance facility for a quick inspection. To do that, I'm going to use another new tool called Generate Origin Destination Links, which performs distance calculations and creates spider diagrams to visualize those distances. The use of spider diagrams for spatial distribution is pervasive across many industries, including city planning, migration studies, crime, and business analysis. And these are just two of the many new analysis tools available in ArcGIS Pro. Hi, I'm Kenyon from the National Government Team here in Washington, DC. Locate XT is an extension for ArcGIS Pro and ArcGIS Enterprise. It's a tool that enables you to extract locations, texts, and dates from your unstructured documents. Today, we're going to be sifting through about 500 Mayan archaeological documents like this one. They contain location names, the country the site's in, the date it was first discovered, and a variety of coordinate formats. Sifting through this many documents, identifying the text that we're interested in, and then manually adding each location and its attributes to a feature class on the map is hours and hours of work. Now, with Locate XT, we can automate the extraction of the text from these hundreds of documents in just a few seconds. To begin extracting locations, we'll drag and drop in the files from our folder. And these contain a variety of file formats like Word, emails, PDF, CSV, and text files. And we'll give our feature class a name of my insights. Now, since our documents contain keywords like the location name and the country the site's in, we'll go into our properties and select our custom attributes to identify the keywords that we're looking for. In this case, Locate XT is capturing the text immediately following the keywords titulo, or title, site name, and location name. A new feature this year in Locate XT is the ability to extract dates in foreign languages and convert them to standard date time formats. In this case, we'll open up our date settings, which contain a variety of languages, and select Spanish keywords and formatting. We'll run the tool, and it'll go through our 546 documents in seconds, extracting the locations and attributes and adding them to the map. If we symbolize our sites by how long ago they were discovered and zoom in on the Yucatan Peninsula, we can identify several sites in yellow that were discovered well before their peers. One of which is Tulum, one of the most famous archaeological sites in the world, located in Mexico, first discovered in 1581, and seen here in its source document. This is how Locate XT extracts locations, texts, and dates from your unstructured texts and documents in a matter of seconds.